Welcome to my third video lecture on uh, module four, which is calculating the non-standard normal variable and, and its probabilities and all of the two cases that are involved in doing this. We've talked about the standard normal distribution on a, on a video lecture two from module four, and I've shown you what it means and how to calculate it on a spreadsheet. I'm going to be doing the same thing for a non-standard variable. So this time we're going to be dealing with x's and p's. So when I'm drawing my normal distribution, and we call this a non-standard normal distribution, which means we're dealing with problems in terms of x's, which means now we're dealing with actually like story problems, application problems. The z's are not story problems, those are standard values. So all I could do is just say find a probability that z is less than this, greater than that. But when it comes to x's, these are actually live examples or application examples like IQ, GPAs, body temperatures, and things of that sort. So <clears throat> let me draw you the distribution here so you can see what it looks like. My distribution here, my horizontal axis now is the x-axis, not the z-axis anymore. And my probability axis is still my probability axis. That doesn't change. The only thing that changes is now it's x instead of z. And now the middle is not zero anymore because only for a standard normal distribution, the center is always zero for z values. But for x, the center is whatever the mean of that experiment is. So in this case, I must provide you with the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so let's say we take an example. Let's say the mean I'm working with is, let's say we're dealing with average GPA. So the mean is 2.7 and the standard deviation is 0.4. So these two values must be provided for you, otherwise you won't be able to do it. And now I'm gonna introduce you to the notation of it. So you could, the notation here is you could just see, and you've, you probably see this, and I don't want you to say, what did that mean? Uh, you'll see this sometimes. N parentheses 2.7.4, that's just how they represent a non-standard normal distribution that has a mean of 2.7, it's just a standard notation and a standard deviation of 0.4. That's how they write <coughs> an, a non-standard normal distribution with a mean of 2.7 and standard deviation of 0.4 notation, just like that. Anyhow, so here we're dealing with our horizontal axes being represented by x and vertical axes being represented with the probability. And now let's go with the forward problem, the, the first one. And remember, there are two of them here, just like there were two of them for the Z. So here, we're going to start with example one, or the first case, which is given X, find P. And then the second example will be given P, find X, will be the reverse, the inverse problem. And remember, again, we're dealing with non-standard normal distribution here. So the first example I'm going to look at, the first case I'm going to look at, will be to say, I'm interested in finding the probability that someone's GPA is less than 3.3, um, given that the average GPA is 2.7. Now, before again, just like previously, before I give you the command, I want to intuitively show you what that means on a normal distribution table, uh, I mean picture. So let's draw it here, uh, find a probability that Someone's GPA is less than 3.3. .3. Well, the average GPA is 2.7. So if I change my color here, so here the middle value is not zero anymore. It's 2.7, which is the mean of the experiment. In a standard normal distribution, the center is always zero because the mean of a Z axis is always zero. But here it varies on the exercise. If you were talking about IQs, then that mean would have been 100. If we're talking about the average number of hours you study on a weekly basis, that would have been probably seven, uh, seven hours or whatever. So depending on the experiment, that average will differ. In this experiment, that average is 2.7. Whereas in a standard normal distribution, that average will always be zero and it will never be different. Anyways, coming back to a non-standard normal distribution here, my average is 2.7 and I want to find, and that's the x-axis you see. So all the values on the right of 2.7 will be greater, on the left will be smaller, obviously. So what would 3.3 be? Well, if 2.7 is in the middle, then 3.3 will be somewhere there. 
OVO, and uh, and what's the probability associated with that? Well, the probability is simply let me just shape this for you guys so you could see what the probability is. The probability is basically this yellow area I'm shading. So the probability that someone's GPA is less than 3.3 .3 is basically that area to its left. There we go. So basically, I'm trying to find that yellow area, which is the probability that someone's uh, GPA is less than 3.3. .3. And if I want to answer that, I would have to find that yellow area with the, with the red question mark in it. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, the command's pretty simple. Again, this is the third case, remember? So we've done two of them for the Z. Now we're going to do two of them for X. And remember, here x is given, we need to find p. So here's our command on a spreadsheet. What we'll write is equal to on a spreadsheet. Let me make it a bit thinner. So we'll put equal to, and then we'll write norm, because it always is norm, because the normal distribution. But remember, it's not the, it's not the standard normal distribution anymore. It's a non-standard normal distribution. So you don't need to write norm.s. So no more s. So it'll just be norm.distribution, and you will use this command if I've given you x and I'm asking you to find a probability. And if you open the parentheses, Excel will tell you what you need to type. It will tell you type x first. What's the x we're trying to find the probability for? It's 3.3. .3. That's the GPA we're looking at. And then it says, well, give me your mean. What's your mean in this exercise? Well, you'll say 2.7. You basically, Excel asks you and you provide. Then you'll say Excel is asking you to input the standard deviation. The standard deviation is 0.4, uh, comma, and then again it says true or false. And remember, by default, we're always looking at the areas to the left. So we write true, which is cumulative. And if you press enter, you'll get 0.9332. And again, as you recall, for probabilities, we use four decimal places. So the probability of that, of, of, your GPA being less than 3.3 .3 is about 93%, which is basically this area here. So that, that area, yellow area, is 93%. And that's how you'll answer this question. Let's look at the reverse scenario, which is the last calculation in this module. Crazy, it's only four of them, and this is the last one. Now your second example will be going in the reverse direction. So here, I'm going to be giving you p and asking you to find x so for example let me draw the normal distribution again here the non-standard normal distribution is still drawing it the same it's just the center is not zero anymore because it's non-standard so here the center the mean will be again my mean was what guys 2.7 very good same example, I mean, same experiment. So the mean is 2.7, and uh, my standard deviation is 0.4. So let me just write the mean is 2.7, and my standard deviation is 0.4, so I won't forget it. Now, remember, we're dealing with the x-axis here, and this is my p-axis. Now here, I said I'm going to give you p. So let's say my P is, I've given you the following P, let's say, P probability, I mean. So let's say I'm telling you that I have this bottom area picked out, or I'm interested in. Uh, let me shade it. Now that area there, 
Let's say I'm going to tell you that that area is 30%. Let me make it a bit thinner. Let's say that area is 30%. And what I'm asking you to find is that particular X value that separates the bottom 30% of all the GPAs from the top 70%. So you see it's the exact opposite of the problem above. Here, I was, I was giving you this X value. I don't know why that colored it in. I was giving you the X value and I was asking you to find a probability and you did 93%. Here, I'm giving you the probability, which is 30%, and I'm asking you to find the x value. We call this the inverse non-standard problem. And how you do it? Well, the command will be equal to, again, we're dealing with a normal distribution, dot. It's not a standard normal distribution, so you don't need to write s. And it's the inverse non-standard normal distribution, so you don't type this, you type inv. So every time you're going the reverse, which is I've given you P and you're finding X, you have to type inverse. Open the parentheses. The first thing Excel asks you to type is the probability, default probability, which is always the probability to the left, the area to the left, or whatever point you're trying to find by default. So that will write 0.3 because that's what the probability is. And then I'll say, what you mean? Well, obviously you have to tell Excel what you mean is. Uh, and then it's Excel asks you for the standard deviation. So you put the standard deviation, which is 0.4. And if you type that on a, a spreadsheet and press enter, you'll get something like 2.49 if I round it to two decimal places, which I asked you, I'm going to expect you to do. So all the X and Z values will have two decimal places and uh, the probabilities will have four decimal places. So therefore, uh, my X is almost 2.49 or 2.5. That means if your GPA is 2.5, 30% of the students have GPAs below you and 70% of the students have GPAs above you. That's basically what that means. That means this X value here, this point here, and I'm going to make it red, this point here, that X value is 2.5 meaning that if your GPA was 2.5, then your GPA would be above 30% of class and it'll be below the other 70% of the class. And that's how you figure that out. And if I write it, this as if probability is 30%, then my X value is 2.49 or 2.5. But in this course, we're gonna go with two decimal places, 2.49. And that will be the answer to that inverse problem. Let me make it a little smaller so you guys could see the whole thing at once. There we go. So these are the two calculations that have to do with a non-standard normal distribution. If I ask you for P and give you X, which was example one, you use norm.dist command. And if I ask you for the uh, X and give you P, you will use the norm.inv command. Now, there are a few different ways each one of these could be, and I could give you a few different problems for each type, but that will be our next video lecture. Thank you, and see you guys next time.